Hello everyone, good to be with you here once again today. Yeah, there's a headline that caught my attention, and I normally don't follow actors and actresses in Hollywood, but there's certain ones that just keep popping up in the headlines, and you're probably familiar with this person uh, by the name of Jennifer Lopez. Well, it appears that she's going to get married to a man named Ben Affleck, Affleck. and it says here, of her marital track record, Lopez said in a past YouTube video before before her most recent nuptials to Ben Affleck, I have been married three times, and once was nine months, and once was 11 months, so I don't really count those. Spouse Ben Affleck, Mark Anthony, profession seeker. So she's saying that she had a few other marriages, but they were short-term marriages so she doesn't really count those she doesn't really count those this is amazing to me folks and and to think that there are people that look up to people like this that are just emitting their shame in the public eye actually they have no shame they're beyond shame the Bible says they glory in their shame, actually. They think it's a cool thing to do these types of things, uh, be married multiple times, and then say statements like this, oh, I don't really count those, knowing that marriage is a covenant that was ordained by God. Yes, yeah, she's going to get married again. And is this one going to last? Is this going to be the end to her string of marriages, marriages and divorces? Like I said, I'm not really interested in the Hollywood folk, but when they have such an influence on society, then we need to speak up. We need to call it what it is. Let's take a look at what the definition of adultery is, and you can form your own opinion. Mark chapter 10, beginning at verse 11. And he said unto them, this is Jesus Christ speaking, whosoever shall put away his wife and marry another, committeth adultery against her. Let's read it again. Whosoever, this doesn't mean just the people in the church or the born-again Christians. Whosoever means whoever, whosoever. It doesn't matter what part of the planet you reside in. Whosoever shall put away his wife and marry another, committeth adultery against her. The act of adultery is being committed by the one who puts away his wife and marries another. What does it mean to put away? Well, let's get closer into that word and uh, we'll see the definition. Apolio, Apolu, to set free, to release, to let go, to send away, to divorce. Divorce. Whosoever shall put away his wife and marries another committeth adultery against her. Well, I'm tired of my wife and I think I want to marry someone else. You know, she doesn't, uh, you know, clean the house well. She doesn't cook the way I want her to cook. And those aren't the problems in my family, folks, because I thank God for my wife. She's a really good cook and she loves to clean. Okay, so, but there are people who have situations like that. Well, you know, they put the toilet tissue in the reverse way that I like it, or they squeeze the, uh, the toothpaste tube from the middle rather than the end, and I'm detested by that. So I'm, I feel like I want to divorce my wife. Yes, they do have certain complaints such as those little types of things and they and these things build up the little things build up and they get to the point where they say well I just want to divorce my wife and I want to marry another woman so they put her away they divorce her for whatever reason and they marry another they commit adultery against her whosoever this is from the man divorcing the woman that type of uh, scenario now it goes to another type of scenario, Mark ten twelve in the reverse way, 
And if a woman shall put away her husband and be married to another, she committeth adultery. So it just, it just isn't going one way, the husband divorcing the wife, committing adultery against her. But now it's the woman putting away her husband. She committeth adultery against him. If a woman puts away her husband, well, I just don't like, you know, the way he tries to uh, be the leader in the family. I'm looking for more of a doormat. Uh, I, he's too assertive or, you know, he's too domineering. I, I can't do the things that I want. I can't wear the things that I want. I want to be free. I want to go out with the girls from time to time and go to the club or go to the bar and I want to go drink or I want to be able to meet new people, whatever the excuse may be. And trust me, I'm not just pulling these out of a hat. I've heard these types of things break up relationships. Well, I want to put him away now. I want to divorce my husband and be married to another. Or another uh, popular one is mutual. It's mutual. They say it's mutual. Oh, irrecon irreconcilable differences. It's such a broad term. Ir irreconcilable differences. That justifies our divorce. And people don't question it. What were those irreconcilable differences? What were those things that one, was w one wasn't willing to compromise on or that you weren't willing to submit to? Irreconcilable differences. The Bible doesn't say anything about irreconcilable differences. It says, if a woman shall put away her husband, I'm tired of him. We've been together for so many years and I just want to expand my horizons and see if the grass is greener on the other side. I want to divorce my husband and be married to another. She shall be called an adulteress or she committeth adultery. You say, well, there's nothing wrong with it being adulteress. You know, everyone's doing it. Okay, well, let's see about the uh, consequences of adultery in 1 Corinthians 6, 9. Many of you are familiar with this scripture. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers. If a man puts away his wife, if a woman puts away her husband, and be married to another, they shall be called an adulterer. These folk shall not, possibly, maybe, or, you know, after time, you know, God will get over it. He's grading on a curve anyways. I do my best. Oh, I was in a bad relationship. You know, I had to do what was best for the family. He, she shall be called an adulterer and they shall not inherit the kingdom of God. It's serious business, folks. If you got to wait to be married, wait to be married. But do not jump into a relationship and just commit yourself to that relationship and say we're going to get married because that's a covenant ordained by God and he takes it seriously God hates divorce let's see it right here in Romans 7 it breaks down a little further know ye not brethren for I speak to them that know the law how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth for the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. So then, if, while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from the law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. This is pretty easy to understand. I don't understand why people make it so complicated. It's easy to understand if a person is alive or dead. And this tells us if the husband is still alive, that a woman is bound. She's bound to her husband as long as he is alive. Now this parallels what Jesus said. We just read it. So then if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called one of the greatest Hollywood actresses or singers or whatever she does, performers, entertainers, she shall be called an adulteress. 
Call it like it is. You know, I made a, well, I was actually preaching at a, I believe it was an Amy Grant concert a while back. And I was standing out there and I was preaching against Amy Grant. Now, she was making Christian songs and there's nothing wrong with that. And and praise God for the, the lyrics that glorify God. I have nothing against the work of, of God in that respect. But the lifestyle of the person, if they're currently living in a type of sin that the Bible mentions as a sin, then something needs to be said about it. And that's what we did. We went out there and we preached against uh, the way she she had dealt with her previous marriage, uh, Gary Chapman, who was also supposed to be a Christian, and she said irreconcilable differences. She divorced him. And very shortly after, she uh, married a man by the name of, uh, I believe it's Vince Gill. And he did the exact same thing. He divorced his wife, and he was already in friendship with Amy Grant, and he married Amy Grant shortly after his divorce. Anything dark, it's how judgmental we've been. You just feel like, where's the love? What you did at the BET Awards was nothing but a sham before God. Yeah, let's open up the Word of God together and let's break the Word like the Word says, iron sharpens iron. And okay. Let's open up the text. Okay. okay. I'm not going to shake your hand, sir. Amy Grant committed rebellion by divorcing her husband, and Vince Gill committed rebellion by divorcing his wife, and they both got married to each other one year later. That's witchcraft. So both of these people put away their spouses and they begin to uh, be involved in this extramarital affair. And that's what we were preaching on. And apparently I was that clip was taken and, and used for some Christian music program that I didn't give consent to, but that's fine. And they put me in a light that I was a street preacher coming against you know, uh, a woman that was uh, in the Christian faith and I was very judgmental. But the point is, we're preaching the word of God. We don't desire people to go to hell. We don't desire to pe for people to be lost. You want to err on the side of caution. You may have your excuses for your divorce, but to err on the side of caution is to obey the word of God. And from what I know, Gary Chapman is still alive. He was alive when she divorced him. They, they were both so, supposedly Christians at the time according to their definition of a Christian, but they were supposed to be in the, in the faith of Jesus Christ. Proverbs 6.26 says, as we close, for by means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread, and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. For by the means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread. He's reduced. He has compromised. His soul has been breached because of the whorish woman. And the adulteress will hunt for the precious soul. She's out there on the hunt, guys. She's out there on the hunt. She's at your job. She's in your neighborhood. She may be your neighbor. She may be on the campus of the school that you attend. The adulteress is hunting for the precious life. And she will bring you down. She will degrade you. She will reduce you. That is her job. To steal, kill, and destroy. She's working for Satan. She has the Jezebel spirit. Look what, look what happened to Samson. He was mesmerized by the beauty of Delilah. And he laid down his life for her. Literally. And she reduced him. And his power was taken. And he was bound up and used as a slave until the day that he died. He gave one last push between those pillars. The Philistines fell down in, by the multitude to their death. And he was able to give, that, to give that up to the glory of God at the end of his life. But he was reduced by the means of a whorish woman. And she has left the track record behind. This is 
these are the ones that we just know of. I mean, there's another, there's a list. You can just see a track record of men that she has, she has reduced and left, left, uh, behind. And, uh, it's just going to happen again and again. And these, these guys need to wake up because if they go along with this, they're guilty as well. They'll be reduced. They'll end up in, in a situation where they're just left for not and uh, she'll go on and continue her hunt. That's her job. It's the Jezebel spirit that's still working in many women, not only Jennifer Lopez, but in many women to this day. Unfortunately, even people that are even professing to be in the church of Jesus Christ and call themselves Christians, they call themselves these things, but only Jesus Christ knows if they are. Many shall say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not done this and that and this and the other? And he will profess, who are you? I never knew you. Why doesn't Jesus know these people? Well, because they don't know his word. And if they don't know his word, how does he know them? When you know someone, what someone likes and dislikes, there's a, there's a compatibility there. There's a meshing. There's, there's a togetherness. But when a person says they know God, but they're, they're not in fellowship with Jesus Christ because they're not, they're not uh, in accord with his word, actually, they'd, they'd actually despise his word. They dismiss his word. And then they say they know him. It's impossible. It's impossible for these people to know God. That's why he said, who are you? I never knew you. You didn't even know my word. You didn't acknowledge my word. You read it, but you didn't want to believe it. And you didn't obey it. So depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Adulterers and adulteresses shall not inherit God's kingdom. I hope she repents before it's too late and just... For, for her sake, the best thing she can do is just take many steps back and remain single for the rest of her life and get, get, get right with God. And then and only then will she probably be in, this, be in the safe zone before the wrath of God comes down upon her. Until next time, everyone. They say numbers never lie. And with three failed marriages, five engagements, and seven boyfriends, J-Lo reigns the queen of high-profile relationships.